Good morning everyone. When Noctis came out I praised his design because I thought it had a lot of focus. He has extreme range on a lot of his things but he's not that powerful in the close-up and so that made me feel like he is very clearly a whiff punisher character and I like when a character has strengths and weaknesses like this because it's sort of the cradle of strategy in a game like uh, Tekken. Uh, but since then my view of Noctis has lessened a little bit. Uh, we've seen the advent of a lot of annoying sort of exploitative Noctis strategy online. And so what I want to do in this guide is just give you my primer for how to deal with a lot of that stuff to make your life a lot easier when you're fighting against him online. What I always say in the beginning of these videos is that these are not tips for beating like a super high level Noctis expert. It's more for those online tips and tricks that are going to make your life uh, easier. And so what I think I want to do here is I want to start off by talking about running 1 plus 2 because I think it's one of the more frustrating moves that you run into. Now, this move is famously linear and so the way you're supposed to deal with it is uh, by sidestepping or sidewalking it. Problem being that that is uh, way too inconsistent. It's a little bit janky actually and I don't know why it was made this way. But let's talk a little bit about uh, how this works. So. The way I think about it when I'm trying to sidestep moves that you typically want to sidestep that come from while running, like uh, while running 2 from Kazumi or while running 2 from Dragunov, is that you want to do the sidestep as late as possible because you want to be as close to your uh, opponent as possible when it happens. And the reason it works that way is if you've ever been on a, uh, a carousel or maybe it's called a merry-go-around in America, I don't know. Uh, you know, one of those carnival rides, if you're very close to the center, you're spinning very slowly, but if you're sitting on like the horse or whatever, very far from the center, you're moving around quicker, because you are moving at uh, around the same uh, center, but it's going to take much longer for uh, something far away from the center to complete an orbit, right? That's how it works. So, uh, what I'm trying to explain here is that because a sidestep has a fixed amount of distance that it moves, imagine if you're close to the center of that merry-go-around and you move a meter, or if we're going to do Americanisms, I guess a yard, to the left, for example, uh, you're going to move very far around the center and cover uh, a large part of your orbit, but if you're far away and you move a yard to the left, you've completed, uh, completed much less of your orbit. And so for this reason, you know, uh, a sidestep that is close to your opponent is much more evasive than one that is uh, performed when you're far away from your opponent. And so typically you want to do your sidestep as late as possible, uh, which is dangerous, which is why it's a skillful thing to do, but it's going to allow you to sometimes completely move around your opponent to the back because of how much more gr uh, ground you cover around the opponent when you do that. The reason I'm talking about this right now is that Noctis is running 1 plus 2. If you try and do the uh, uh, sidestep as late as possible, what happens a lot of the time, like this, is you just get blown up. Uh, and it's uh, kind of uh, annoying, and I don't know why they decided to uh, make it this way, but the reason, uh, or the way you need to actually think about sidestepping this move is that you want to place your sidestep when Noctis gets locked into his vertical axis, which is right before he jumps off the ground. And so when you can predict this move, uh, you want to sidestep it before he jumps off the ground, and then he then, then gets locked in vertically, and you can... Uh, do an evasive sidestep and create the whiff. You still want to be uh, close when this happens, but, but that's hard because of the massive range of the move. He's usually going to perform it at a range where um, he's going to hit you with like the tip of his sword or the middle of his sword, so it's hard to get close to him when you're uh, being defensive against this move. But try to do that if possible. So let's show it a little bit here. So you can see right when he uh, like jumps off the ground, or right before he jumps off the ground is when I want to do my sidestep, right? So somewhere around there, yeah. And you can see I'm sidestepping this move uh, right at the moment because I uh, feel it's uh, easier to do to the right than to the left. It is possible to do it to the left as well, right there. But I think that's a little bit more risky. But you can see here, I am actually sidestepping very early uh, a lot of these uh, successful ones because of uh, how early he gets locked in vertically when he does this. And so that's uh, a little bit of a janky thing about this move that I find annoying because I think it would be uh, it would make more sense for this to be uh, consistently sidesteppable. Um, I feel like that's the way they intended for it to be designed anyway. You can sidewalk it uh, if you're out here at a range. Uh, it's going to get you uh, blown up a lot of the time anyway. So if I'm out here and I'm sidewalking to the right, okay, that works. But if I'm sidewalking to the left, you can see it's sort of range dependent. But right is still better than left. 
but if you're very close, you can uh, start sidewalking early, and it uh, should work at least to the right. Yeah, and maybe not to the left. Let's see. No, okay. So I think that proves that uh, you actually want to be moving uh, right against this move. But yeah, my tip when you want to sidestep it is do it right. Do it. Uh, try to predict the move and do it before he jumps into the air or right when he jumps into the air. And uh, try to be as close to the opponent as possible is my recommendation. But what I'm going to say next is that there's actually a better way to deal with this move that I'm, I've been applying a lot recently. That I've found a lot of consistency with and this is uh, much much easier. And it's to just simply uh, predict the move and jab him out of it. You can see that it's, you can almost like easily visually confirm this and get the jab in anyway. You can do it very very late and it's still going to work uh, super consistently. And it's one of those moves that like you know running two from Dragonov, you usually know that it's going to come out like a minute before it happens. Uh, it's very easily uh, predicted and so uh, jabbing this move is uh, pretty easy and pretty consistent. So uh, if you feel that the sidewalking and sidestepping against this move is janky, uh, my recommendation is to start jabbing him out of it and uh, collect your flow combo. Uh, because it's going to be powerful enough that it uh, it's going to dis discourage your opponent from abusing the move uh, and you can still get some uh, decent damage in. But yeah, that's going to be uh, my tips for how to deal with the running 1 plus 2. I think next we're going to talk a little bit about uh, reversals because this reversal tends to come out in very specific situations making it predictable right now. Uh, specifically Noctis likes to do it after getting a small group of moves blocked um, and so I'm going to show them to you now. The first one I want to show you is down forward 1-4 uh, so I'm going to do down forward 1-4 into one of these reversals and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to block the down forward 1-4 and then I'm going to try and jab my opponent uh, and you know my one jab is my fastest move in the game so let's see what happens. As you can see here, even my fastest move that I have is going to get uh, blown up by this reversal. If I do a down forward one, I get blown up. If I do a uh, standing four, a kick, I get blown up. If I try and do a down forward two, a uh, 15 frame launcher here, I get blown up. And so, um, basically you can't swing at your opponent after getting this move blocked if he's going to reverse it because uh, there's almost nothing you can uh, beat him with here. Uh, I think even your uh, forward one plus two spear is going to get beat by this, let's see. If you do it fast enough. Okay, maybe you can get a spear here. Anyway, uh, so that's uh, something you got to be careful about. And so the way to deal with this is, well, obviously, first of all, down forward one four, which is an uh, abuse string with Noctis, you need to know is uh, duckable high on the second hit. That's very important to duck uh, when you're able to. He can delay the four, but uh, he's, he's mainly going to do that when he's looking for like wall spots. So uh, if he's using this move, then you should definitely look for the duck and the uh, launch punish. Uh, that's important. But the other way to deal with it when you're predicting a reversal is you just wait for a second. You see that he did the reversal and then you whiff punish it, right? So like that. Uh, but that's uh, one situation where you definitely have to look out for the reversal. Uh, and also be aware that you need to duck down forward 1-4, right? Next. Let's talk about the uh, probably the most uh, used move for setting up the reversal, which is down back one, uh, one plus two. And you can see just like in the previous situation, jabs get beat, uh, four gets beat, two gets beat, uh, down four two for the launch gets beat. Let's see if he can take the spear as well. Yep, even the spear gets beat here, unlike the other situation. So. Uh, again, another situation where you definitely need to look out for the reversal because it comes out a lot after this move on block. So look for it, see it, with punish it. It's uh, by far the best way. Another way to deal with this situation obviously is to just do a low because while Noxus Reversal will grab all of your uh, mids and highs, it's not going to do anything about uh, lows. So you can uh, get a powerful low here maybe. That's the other one. Okay, and the uh, third move I want to show you that you see a lot is uh, not that one. Not that one either. There we go. Four forward one plus two. Uh, and the interesting thing about this situation is I'm doing two here and you can see I'm getting reversed. I'm doing down for two. 
Let's see if I get reversed for doing that. Yep, gets beat as well. But if I do jabs here, you can see that my jabs will actually uh, beat the reversal in only this situation after this move. Um, meaning that, okay, if I do an 11 frame move here, I am uh, probably going to get reversed. But if I do a 10 frame, I can actually sneak 10 frames in here. So that's very, very important to notice, uh, that only after 4 foot 1 plus 2 do you have the opportunity to sneak in 10 frames before the reversal successfully. Now, don't get confused here and think that this move is actually minus 10 on block or something that, and that the, this damage is guaranteed on block. It's not. It's a safe move. Uh, all I'm showing you is that uh, if he does go straight into the reversal, you can get a 10 frame move in between. So those are the three specific situations where I think his reversal comes out very often and if you can just try and chill right there uh, and predict that you can get a good launch which is important okay next let's talk a little bit about uh, shift break these aren't going to be like huge revelations in terms of shift break I think most people have uh, figured out how this move works by now but in case somebody's still struggling with it uh, let's explain it here so this is an Octus 4-2 projectile when it hits he gets 33 damage in a knockdown like that but when it gets blocked this happens you can see he rolls towards his opponent. That roll happens on block and it happens on whiff and it's very important. The reason it happens is if it didn't he could stand on the other side of the screen like this and just keep on throwing his sword and the move would be excuse me the move would be completely broken and so he needs to be put at some sort of disadvantage for uh, getting this move blocked and the way they've done that is he does this roll forward uh, like this and when he reaches his opponent, he is at minus 9. So the move is safe, you're not going to get a punish here, but you do get plus 9 as the opponent, and so you can apply a mix-up. Uh, you're at a huge advantage. So you can just block this move, uh, and then you know mix up a low with some sort of mid, and uh, that's fine for a way of dealing with this move. But the other way of dealing with the move, again, is that it's uh, supposed to be sidestep or sidewalked. Um, now, the problem with the sidestep and sidewalk on this move is that because Noctis is going to be in the roll immediately after, he's considered in an airborne state right there, sort of like Eddie in a lot of his stance transitions, and so um, you can whiff punish him, but you're going to have to do some sort of flow combo if you want to catch him during the roll. It's what I recommend you do, but you need to sort of go into practice mode and figure out a specific option that's going to work for your character when this happens. And so uh, set Noctis to shift break in uh, practice mode, sidestep it, and then try out your options. What I do when I play Noctis against Noctis online is I do this. I do a 2-2-4-2, two, two, uh, two, which is a very big hitbox mid with a built-in spin, and so I can get a flow combo for decent damage and I can uh, punish. Uh, so find out what your character can do in that situation instead, but if you find it janky and difficult, block, collect the plus 9, apply a mix-up, uh, and that's uh, perfectly respectable as well. Just be aware that there is a lot of situations where you do want to move sideways against Noctis, so don't get uh, too scared about doing it, you just need to pick your spots. Um, okay, next I think I want to talk a little bit about the uh, 444. Uh, this is important because it's going to get you destroyed unless you know about it. So, uh, 444 is a combo ender for Noctis. He doesn't really use it outside of uh, uh, ending combos. Uh, if he does, I mean it's 50 damage, it's a huge damage move. But the thing about this is, I think what we're going to do is that we're going to make my opponent do it. And I'm going to show you the different options I have as the opponent to get off, off the ground when I get uh, hit by this. Okay, so we've recorded that. Now just imagine uh, that this is at the end of a combo. It's going to be the exact same thing, exact same situation. Um, first of all, uh, notice when I get hit by this move that I'm sent into this weird spin state and I land on the ground like that. Uh, as far as I know, this move is not techable in any way. Uh, you're considered uh, uh, you're not considered like airborne in a normal way where you can tech this move when you hit the ground so you can see if I'm spamming the one button here I can't tech that uh, which is uh, important to note first of all but then let's talk about our options to wake up now if you try and uh, next uh, notice the fact that I'm actually turned with my uh, head towards Noctis right here uh, meaning that if I try and get up quick, my back is going to be uh, open for him, meaning that he can uh, I can't block attacks. And so, if I try to do 
any of the following options. If I try and uh, stand up, if I try and back roll, if I try and do get up three, and if I try and do uh, get up four, all of those options will get me immediately launched if knock just goes straight into uh, a down four two. So let's record uh, four 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 into down four two, like that. And now I'm gonna do. Uh, let's start off by just uh, trying to roll back. See, I get launched. Okay, let's do a uh, get up three. You can see I still get launched. Let's try and do a get up four. Okay, let's try and do a Chinese get up. Uh, I did it too late. Let's try it again. Yeah, still get launched. So basically, uh, if you try and get up normally or do any kind of wake up attack, you're going to get completely obliterated because he's already at the end of a combo. And then he's going to launch you straight into another powerful combo. And so what you want to do after this move uh, hits you is uh, just side roll is a good option. Like that. Um, it's going to beat a lot of uh, the other Oki options that you might have that he might uh, mix this up with. You can side roll into the foreground or the background. Either is going to work. Let's see if we can get a background roll here. Yeah, so that's going to work. Or you can stay on the ground. If he does the down for two, you can actually float it with uh, a get up four after he's actually done it. So you can do stuff like that. Uh, I don't think uh, I can get a guaranteed combo with Noctis here, but maybe you can with your character. Anyway, so you just need to be very careful that after 444, you need to uh, stay on the ground or side roll because basically any other get up option is going to get you launched by the down 42. And if your opponent figures out that you don't know about that, then they're just going to keep on doing it forever, which is very, very annoying. Okay, I think uh, the uh, next and probably last thing I want to talk about is uh, that after this running 1 plus 2 gets blocked, especially, but in any kind of a sort of Oaken mix up situation, the two moves that you're going to see a lot are down back two, uh, down back one plus two, and uh, down back two. This is down back two, this is down back one plus two. And so uh, the reason this is dangerous is, uh, well, in terms of Oki, obviously, because this hits grounded, this hits grounded, uh, this is going to launch you if you get up crouching to try and block this, and this is going to hit you if you get up standing uh, trying to block this. It's a very sort of complete Oki package just across these two moves. It's the exact same thing as Brian's two soccer kicks for Oki, uh, the way they complement each other. It's the exact same concept. And so, let's talk a little bit about down back two first. This is a seeable and launch punishable low. So let's uh, demonstrate that quickly. So you can see you can consistently launch punish that, but you need to react to the move and block it to make that happen. It is a C below, but it is kind of difficult, especially online. If you get counter hit by the move, he can uh, get another guaranteed one. And if he's a good Noctis player, uh, he probably knows that he can uh, do something like this to actually get a powerful combo. Uh, you don't see that too much online, but it can happen. So on counter hit, you're screwed. But if uh, you've managed to visually react to the move, you should definitely try and launch punish it. Uh, the down back two that he mixes this up with uh, is actually not a safe move. It has massive range and pushback, but it is minus 16. So be aware that if you have anything that is uh, 16 and has very good range, or faster, and has very good range, you can punish this move on block. But you need to be very careful about doing that uh, sloppily because what's going to happen is because of the massive pushback, if you try and come in and you're just one frame too late, he usually has another launcher, maybe another down back two or uh, a down for two locked in and you're going to get launched. So if you're going to punish this uh, on block, be very confident and know exactly how you want to do it and know that you can pull it off. Otherwise, on block... Um, I would say just hang back, maybe do a back dash, maybe start moving sideways and try and look for an opening instead. Maybe he's going to whiff, you know. Uh, but don't get too excited about trying to block punish it uh, because you might get blown up. You need to be confident when you're going to do that. And also a lot of the time, I mean, uh, just eating the low for the mix-up. It is 23 damage, so it is big, it is dangerous, but it is so much more preferable to eat one uh, or two of these than to uh, get launched by this move because this is going to get you blown up. And this down forward 1 plus 2, by the way, has uh, such insane range. I can't really believe the range on this move. 
This is a safe mid that's going to wall splat you from like out here. I mean, the range is completely insane. And so, just be aware that when you get this move, uh, when you block this move, this uh, also isn't going to. Uh, uh, this isn't going to be punishable at all because it's completely safe. Uh, I think that's everything I want to talk about in this video. I think I can, like, lately I've seen a little bit of a res resurgence of this uh, sideways hop after jabs. So if you see this, uh, just be aware that uh, what he's trying to do is he's going to jump, evade something, and launch you with while standing 2 2, is uh, usually what he's looking to do. And so uh, what you need to do is just wait a little bit until he's done the teleport and then launch punish him because he's completely open. It's a launch punishable move. But if you try and punish too early, you're going to whiff because he's uh, moving sideways during the teleport and then he's going to launch you with this. So just be patient. Same concept as with the reversal. See that he did the reversal or the teleport and then uh, uh, punish it accordingly. Uh, for example, with uh, you know a down for two launcher. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously, always uh, launch punish uh, Demolition Man when he gives you the chance, if he messes up and uses that. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to be uh, it for this video. Uh, there are some other stuff, uh, some other things I could have gone through like this, but I think this is going to be the, the big things that are going to make a big difference for you. Uh, I hope you learned something, and I hope it was useful. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry that the videos were a little bit sparse this week, but I just had a crazy week at work. I actually wrote the script for like four more videos that I'm going to make very soon, so there's more stuff on the horizon. Uh, thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye-bye.